Good afternoon. This is Chad Erickson from Advice Media. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to our webinar this month. Hope that everyone had a, a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday with, uh, with family and friends. Um, and it was a great opportunity to give thanks. Um, we uh, are so excited to have everyone here. This is something that we continue to, to just love. Um, it's something that we, we get great feedback on and we welcome your comments if you've got comments that you want to share with us afterwards, please do. Uh, we're always looking to, to make this, um, this monthly webinar a chance to help you, really a chance to help you give, give you that edge, that one more thing to put in your tool belt to help you become better at what you do and to make your practice as successful as possible. And, and today's no different. Um, and I'll go ahead and introduce our speaker in just a moment. But uh, before we get started, I want to make sure everyone's aware we've got our, our control panel, which you'll see on your screen. Um, I will be moderating um, everything today. And so if you do have any questions for our presenter, Dr. Josh Wagner, today, I invite you to put those in under the, the question section. And I will be, um, I'll moderate those and I'll present those to him at the end so that he'll be able to answer any of your questions. So at any time um, that you have a question, please put it in there and I'll, um, and I'll you know, just keep those and, and we'll be able to, to respond to those at the end. Um, I'm excited to welcome back today Dr. Josh Wagner. Uh, Dr. Wagner has become a, a true friend of, of mine and Advice Media's. Uh, we, uh, I was introduced to him a little over a year ago and we had him come in and do a webinar and it was one of our, our, our best webinars ever. We actually had a ton of feedback on the information that he shared. And uh, we've continued to stay in touch and, and I've been intrigued by the things that he's doing and, and the progression. And, and then we, we had an opportunity to go to lunch together a couple months ago and he shared some new things with me and I just was I'm like, we gotta have you back in, this is phenomenal. And so I, I, I Dr. Wagner, thank you. Let me formally give uh, your introduction and turn the time over to you for our presentation today. Uh, so Dr. Josh Wagner, he's gonna show you the underlying answer of why you attract the exact number of new patients you do and what to do to increase it. He'll share three secrets to increasing your new patient conversions for higher procedure investment, retention, and referrals that can all be accomplished within 30 days. Working with hundreds of doctors in over 18 countries, Dr. Wagner has found the underlying reason why some doctors have more than enough new patients and no resistance with pr procedure investment, while others with the same skills, education, and accolades feel stuck, burnt out, and in the hamster wheel, practice of, of needling every, of, of needing ever, ever more new patients and feel chained to the practice. And some of you are probably like, yeah, that's, that's me sometimes. Um, you just you feel that. Uh, but Dr. Wagner will share what separates these two doctors on our webinar today and how to go from burnout to breakthrough and from stuck to more success than you can handle. So with that, Dr. Wagner, thank you again for being here. Um, and the time is yours. I'm going to put myself on mute and listen to your presentation. Great, Chad. Thank you so much for that introduction. And everyone who's on right now, thank you for taking time out of your day. You know, it's it's 2 p.m. Eastern. You're in the middle of a work day, and I guarantee what you're going to get on this can absolutely not just change your experience in practice, meaning. How does practice feel? Do you enjoy showing up on Monday morning and every day? But your actual numbers, your income how your staff relates to you, and actually it can be applied anywhere else in your life. And Chad, thank you again for having me. Last year when we did the practice strategies presentation, I got tremendous feedback after that as well, so much that I'm going to include a few slides at the end of this to share um, and then lead doctors to where they can get the entire conversion conversation. But I really like speaking to your group. Obviously, they're using advice media so they understand the significance of keeping a great looking up-to-date web presence and hopefully also are using the live chat uh, without their staff having to handle it so they're not losing as many leads and new patient prospects who are making it to their website so without further ado the single reason why your practice is where it is right now and i include everything number of new patients revenue income quality of your staff, and just as importantly, are you inspired in practice or do you feel stuck, burnt out, or pessimistic about what next year has to offer? So I'm gonna share with you literally my life's work up until this point and the entire premise of a new book that I'll be having coming out 
uh, most likely quarter one of 2019. So please, if you are going in between Facebook and YouTube and this presentation or on your phone, there is likely something you need to hear that you will miss if you're juggling three things right now. Grab a piece of paper, pen, Word document, take notes because I'm from New York, I go quickly, and I really don't want you to miss anything. This isn't fluff. This isn't going to be a pitch for something else. I'm giving you the premise of why your life and your practice is where it is and what to do about it if it's not where you want it to be. And that's not putting you down whatsoever. I work with successful doctors and professionals all over the world. And no matter what level you're at, there's always room for growth. It's just inherent in the human condition. We want what we don't have and there's always something extra we can, we can evolve into. So too many doctors I work with, the major excuse or false self-sabotaging belief they have is that time alone are gonna change their practice results. Now, if you're within your first one, two or three years, that's justifiable because you're growing, you're new in the community, you're doing your thing, and there's just an aspect of organic growth of how many people know about you. But I know the majority of doctors on this have been in their community in practice at least five, 10 plus years. And it actually flips at that point. And especially if you've been 15, 20 and really established because time alone is not going to change your new patient numbers, your retention numbers, your conversion percentage, um, how easily patients invest in you. It's actually going to be the opposite. Meaning every year you're going to have more competition, whether that's more aesthetic or plastic uh, surgeons, practitioners going into your area or other centers or procedures that are in competition with you, but not nearly as powerful or as effective. So each year um, at this stage, things don't just change beneficially for time. Think about any area in your life. If you just coast, the definition of coasting, it only works if you're going downhill by physics. So be careful of just thinking, okay, next year I'll be in I'll be in the city another year longer, more people will land on my website, more people will talk about me. No, if that's your game plan, you got to be really, really careful. And if that's your game plan, I guarantee it's an aspect of why your numbers, again, in any respect, new patients, income, revenue, are likely staying at the same level. And my goal right now is to show you how to snap yourself out of that, what you don't even know is possible. So the first question to really start getting an understanding of what I'm going to talk about is why do doctors all over the world and the country with the same exact credentials, degrees, level of education, clinical skills, even marketing budgets produced that produce vastly different practice results. And results again can mean income, how you feel in practice. Does practice feel like a grind or do you feel light and enthusiastic and inspired in practice? And how many hours do you feel you need to be in practice to produce the results you want? So we all know that you can have the same exact skill level and one doctor can struggle and one doctor has the multi-million dollar income. We know there's multiple doctors in the same location, all different uh, levels of success, doing the same procedures, the same number of staff, same quality of staff, same credentials and office size. And you can pick your objective outcome or subjective uh, parameter. And there's doctors with the same ones who have very different levels. But it's also not these determining factors, with, which of course take it to another level, like how much money you're investing in your marketing. Does that play a role? Absolutely, but it's not the primary reason. Neither are all of the personal intrinsic characteristics and values like determination, focus, discipline, purpose, or passion, um, everything that you should be cultivating, focusing on, because it absolutely does make a difference. It's just not the underlying single determining factor that makes a difference of how the needle moves in your life and in your practice, which is what I'm going to show you. So do these play a role? Absolutely. I'm never going to deny that. But if you don't have one single belief I'm about to share with you, none of those are actually going to make the difference. You'll still self-sabotage. I know you know people with great discipline, great focus, who, or it may be yourself, but stay stuck. And staying stuck doesn't mean that you're just getting by or you're failing. It could be staying stuck at a great income, 
but you know you're worth more. You know you can make more. You know neighbor down the street, the, the, the aesthetic uh, surgeon down the street with the same staff, the same level of discipline, the same procedure is doing better than you in less hours in practice. So it's not about, I'm not saying anyone's struggling when I say staying stuck, it's that, that you're not continually growing. Now, if you are just getting by or things aren't working out, this is even more reason to let go of the Facebook, the Instagram, the social media, and stay focused on what I'm about to tell you. So choose the most important area in your life you want to change right now. And that could be, of course, your practice, but it doesn't have to be just practice. It could be your income. It could be the quality of your marriage or lack of. It could be any aspect of your health. It could be your family. It could be your emotional state and your peace of mind. Because when I reveal to you what this is, I want you to be thinking about something that's personal to you and most important to you because then it'll make the most impact for you to decide to actually have this belief, which I'll show you how to get. So choose an area most important to you. And Chad, I'm not gonna ask you to share, but you, you do this too, so you can be involved. Now, in this one area of life, what do you want but you don't have? that you're actively pursuing. So this can be an area that's going well, but you want something new, different, or more. Or it can be an area that's not going well, and you want it to go well. So it could be financially, a new, a different income, a different revenue level. It could be your number of new patients that follow, uh, come in and find you each month. It could be your health, whether it's your weight, a health condition or concern, it could be family dynamics. It could be your peace of mind. Again, that you just want a whole nother level of happiness, joy, and peace as the norm, as a daily basis, as the, on the weekends. But here's the caveat. You have to actively be pursuing it right now. So this isn't you're five foot six and you wish you were six two. This isn't you have a $500,000 income and you wished it was a million dollars, but you're really not doing anything differently. So we're not talking about a, this would be a nice future. This is something you hope for, you wish for. I'm talking about something you're actively putting an energy into. So if it is income increase, maybe that's why you're on this webinar. Maybe that's why you engage with advice media. Maybe that's why you're in a coaching program. Um, go to seminars. Like That would be you're actively pursuing it, but you still don't have what you want. Health-wise, it could be you're doing what you think you're supposed to be doing, whether it's the supplements, the exercise, the treatments, but things aren't changing. So that's the caveat. Pick an area, pick within that area what you want that you're actively going after, but you still don't have. And predictably, it's not going to happen, let's say, next month, in six months, um, or in a year. Like You know there's a level of stuckness or self-sabotage, even though you're actively pursuing this. Oh, gave it away. And the most important question you can ask yourself in this area right now is do you truly believe you deserve having it? And I want you to be really honest. It's a yes or no answer. And if you're very, very honest, if you're actually going for something and it's not in the foreseeable future and you don't have it yet and you feel stuck, you're self sabotaging you most likely don't believe you deserve having it. And that's very normal. That's about 90% of people. Now, if you do believe you deserve having it, then either subconsciously you don't and you just, you've got to get to that and admit it, or you are on that trajectory and you are getting it. So maybe it's the income increase and you do see month after month, you are having steady growth and you will hit that number. Whereas rather than over the past year, you've been flatlined, even if it's good, but your goal is to exit and you're, you know, you're not increasing. So apply this again, whether it's health, your family, your income, your practice, your new patient numbers. Do you truly believe you deserve having or getting the result you're going after? And when you're really honest and you believe and you understand that there's the undeserving belief in your psyche no matter how much coaching, discipline, focus, determination, passion, money you pour into that area, you will not get it. Or if you do get it, you'll end up self-sabotaging and losing it. Because the deserving belief is the underlying 
common denominator, the single factor that separates people who get what they're going after and who don't. Now, if you pour on all those other factors like discipline, determination, commitment, integrity, focus, if you pour on, you're just going to get it that much quicker and easier. But without a deserving belief, even with determination, focus, discipline, pouring money into marketing, you will self-sabotage and stay stuck at your current level. And that is the majority of people in this world. And I'll share with you how deserving beliefs originate because you're not born with them. You're born a blank slate. But the majority of people, it's a rat race. It's constantly throwing time, energy, and money at different programs and solutions that they think are going to make the difference. But without you transforming the most important aspect of it all, believing you deserve having it, you will always self-sabotage and stay stuck. So how does this happen? I'll give an example. Dr. Anderson, a, a doctor I worked with a couple of years ago, he was just getting by. I mean, just getting by living-wise, definitely not financially, because literally what he was paying his student loans back, his monthly payment, was less than the amount the interest was accruing. So you know everywhere else, whether it's mortgage, you know how bad that situation is. He didn't enjoy showing up to practice and of course felt burnt out and fed up. Now, do you think he had great conversion rates? Of course not. Do you think his uh, patients respected him? Of course not. Do you think his community knew about him? Of course not. Do you think his family looked up to him? Of course not. So I could have given him the absolute best ways to market his practice and lead patients, new patients, through a series of conversations that has them say, let's get started. I want to pay out of pocket. I thought insurance was going to cover, but it doesn't. Let's get, you know, and I still want to tell people about you. I could have given them that perfectly, but with a self-sabotaging, undeserving belief, he wouldn't have done it correctly. He wouldn't have done everything. And even if he did, it still would have somehow messed up and completely not worked. And how did this happen? So Dr. Anderson admitted to me that all throughout growing up, his father was extremely pessimistic. So when it came to his middle, uh, middle school years and he was asking about girls and dating, you know, his father would say, it's, it's not going to work out and give him bad advice in how to speak to girls. When it came to his grades, he never believed he, he could do it. And finally, at around sometime in college, when he told his dad he wanted to become a doctor, his dad replied, first name, I'm not going to give it away. That's not for us. We're blue collar people. Now, Dr. Anderson still went on and got his degree, got licensed and opened up in practice. But from that comment, he had an undeserving belief that he can be a success as a doctor because the most important role model and man in his life told him that's not for him. That's not who he is. That's not what our family does. So there was no inherent intent by his father. And that's important to realize because if you start thinking back to some of the most significant instances in your life, and this could be traumatic or this could be a comment that you overheard that forever ingrained, you don't believe having X, Y, or Z. Maybe that's an incredible relationship. Maybe that's financial success. Maybe that's peace of mind. This isn't about blaming that other person. It happened. Most likely it wasn't intentional. But what happens is that starts to grow. That seed is planted most often before we're even seven years old. And that seed starts to grow, shaping every one of our decisions, the actions we take, how we interpret events, and our just conditioned psyche of this is what I deserve. So I'm going to act in accordance with that. So once we, under, under, once we uncovered that, discovered it, and, show, and he started doing what I'm going to show you in this presentation to flip your switch from undeserving to deserving in whatever area you want to target, he knocked out his student loans, I believe within two years, he quadrupled his income, he reduced his practice hours by about a third, and just as importantly, he loved showing up to practice. Everything switched, everything. So is deserving all encompassing? Absolutely not. This isn't some people have it and some people don't. You're born with a blank slate. Everything that you experience within those first few years is what determines 
which deserving beliefs you have in which areas. So when I say deserving isn't all encompassing, you don't have it on or off applied to every aspect of your life. It applies to every single area. So even within your practice, you can have a deserving belief on what your income should be. You can have a deserving belief or you do have a deserving belief on how many new patients you get you attract each month on average. You have a deserving belief on what your procedure conversion rate is. You have a deserving belief whether you have great relationships with your staff. You have a deserving belief whether of how great your staff performs and shows up. So in every single slice and sliver of every single area of your life, you have a deserving belief and it's not fixed, it's changeable. But if you don't even know they exist, if you don't know they're running your operating system, then of course you can't change it. So what I'm gonna show you here is first, you gotta be aware that this is happening. You've gotta be aware of what do you wanna start focusing on first and change where it's happening, which again is, what are you going after that you don't have and you know you're self-sabotage, self-sabotaging, or you're doing everything you think you should be doing, but still staying stuck. That is where you have a conscious or subconscious or both undeserving belief. And that's where you need to flip the switch. And then once you do it in that area, then you can do it to every other area. And you can start knocking them down one by one. And that is when life starts really, really changing and getting so much easier, so much more fun, and you can start contributing it to the people in your life too. So just like I said, if you ever want to see real change, you must address your deserving belief. It doesn't mean you can't see change because you can see spikes and differences in results. If you don't flip the switch in your deserving belief, you'll self-sabotage. And it doesn't mean your deserving belief can't organically over time change. Sure it can, but why leave it up to chance? Why leave it up to so much time? Why not do what I'm going to share with you and then have it before 2019 hits? Especially if it relates to your practice and your income, your number of new patients and your conversion. So knowing you don't believe you're deserving isn't going to change anything. And that's where we are right now. I've just gave you the premise and the understanding. But knowing that's not going to flip your switch. But you know that awareness is the first step to changing anything because most people, even doctors, even very successful professionals, go about life pretty unconscious. And the successful ones, maybe the people you compare yourself to, they don't know the, the deserving belief. They just have it flipped on. It's just inherent. It's natural in how they operate and how they see the world. That's why you and the person you compare yourself to may be spending the same on marketing, may be using the same coach, may be offering the same services in the same town, the same number of staff, the same size practice space. But if they have a deserving belief, everything's going to come easier to them. If you don't, you're going to struggle and strain and grind it out and feel like the hamster wheel. And again, this applies to your health, your relationships. It may be the marriage you envy in your neighbor compared to the one you have or lack of. It may be the body weight, size, or health. You compare yourself to your neighbor, yet you're doing the running, you're doing the sit-ups, you're doing the healthy eating, you're doing the supplements, you're doing everything you think you should, but stuff's not changing. You've got to attack the most important underlying theme, which is whether or not you believe deserving. You believe you're deserving of having the results you're going after. So you must create that belief and being aware of where it's happening, which again is anywhere you're going after in life that you don't have, that's where you need to apply the deserving process to. So in the premise of this presentation and webinar, because a lot of you got on specifically catered to more new patients without any more hours, investment or staff, this is exactly what you can do. Now, if you realized so far in the last 15 minutes, maybe there's something more important than new patients, like your income, because you can get less new patients and increase your income based on other factors. Or maybe you realized it's your relationship or your health or your peace of mind. It doesn't matter. You've got to choose what's most important to you to flip and flip the switch using the deserving process, which I'm about to share you. So again, I'm going to tell you exactly what you can do. Um, there's no fluff here. So 
here's a great example from the last seminar I gave, Dr. Richards, very successful about, but very successful yet feels stuck because he's at the 1.2 million income and has been there for a number of years, has tried many different things, changes up his marketing, changes up his approach, but wants to see increase. What we discovered at the seminar was that for the majority of his entire professional career, his goal was to earn more than his father did. Now, his father, he has a very successful family, and I don't remember what it was, but let's assume he knew his father's income was about, during his father's professional years, was about a million dollars. So it's interesting that Dr. Richards stayed stuck at 1.2 for years after getting there, after surpassing the $1 million mark, because unconsciously, his deserving belief was just, I deserve to make more than my father. And so right after he did that, his psyche shut down in terms of all the other opportunities, actions, and aggressiveness that he could have done to keep increasing his income. So remember, this isn't about someone who's just struggling or failing. This applies to any area in life because we're talking about a $1.2 million income. You're in the top 0.5% of, of the world, if not even smaller. So once we cleared that out, in that weekend, once he realized it and then started applying the process, it's been months now, or a couple months, he's consistently been having $40,000 income weeks. So that translates to 160 a month, that translates to roughly $2 million years, and it's been consistent, it wasn't just the first week. So you see how immediately things started changing once he was aware of why this happened, where it's happening, and then applying the deserving process. And that is no different than you can start doing after this. So 2019 looks a lot different than how 2018 looks. So this has become so important and I've just developed this. So this is the entire premise of the book that's coming out in quarter one of 2019. And it's not just for doctors, it's for anyone because this applies everywhere. This is so important that over the past year, I've incorporated it into all of my coaching programs because I've got to walk my talk. If this is the fundamental underlying determinant between you getting what you want, I can't just give you the aesthetic procedure conversion strategies because if you don't have the deserving belief of higher conversions, everyone referring to you, everyone saying yes, and your income dramatically increasing, if you don't have that, again, I can give you the absolute best strategies and you will wind up self-sabotaging. So now inside all the programs, you will, look, I'm going to share with you what the deserving process is right now, but we go a lot more in depth. And of course you can connect with me and interact with me to make sure you're doing it right and how to iterate as you go on. So uh, that's just very, very important to know. So the first part where there's two steps and it is actually really, really simple. It's not necessarily easy, but it's very simple. What doesn't make it easy is that just like anything, if you don't do it daily, repetition, it's not gonna stick. No differently for an alcoholic, you can't have days off. You can't decide to drink on Fridays. If you're committing to being vegetarian or vegan, you can't do meat on Sundays. If you're choosing to be faithful to your spouse, you can't have a cheat day once a month. It doesn't work. So it's got to be daily. And if you already do some type of meditation, visualization, prayer, spirituality, you realize you don't take days off. If you do, you're not really in the game. You're not really living it. So very, very important to understand. The first step, most people have never heard of before. Most people have never done. It's called clearing. And I was fortunate to learn this years ago when I was struggling dramatically after loaning a so-called friend's startup a significant amount of money with paperwork, with a contract. And as we find out, people aren't always who they say they are, especially in business and when money's involved. And after a couple of years, I realized I wasn't getting paid back. And this wasn't an investment in a hope for a business. This was a straight loan. And it ate away at me for an entire year, meaning all I could think about is why was I, why was I taken advantage of? 
what should I do about this? Because even though we did have it written down, the loan notes weren't as enforceable, whereas attorneys thought they could really take this on easily and see a monetary return. So I didn't have that going for me. Um, what did I do to deserve this? And my own daily morning meditation was completely sabotaged for a year. My business stayed absolutely flatlined, meaning I wasn't increasing as the trajectory all the other years and since then have because of this. It absolutely tormented me the whole time. You know, what did I do to deserve this? Why was I taken advantage of? Why was I disrespected? And what should I do constantly throughout the day enveloping me? What got me through that was the first part of the deserving process, which is clearance, which I'm gonna to explain to you right now. Because for the most part, as humans, as our psychological and subconscious survival mechanism, our brain seeks to avoid everything that we don't want. So we all have negative emotions, negative experiences, things that trigger us. You hear someone's name, you see their face, a memory pops up about them or something that happened in your past, and immediately, the muscles in your back tighten up, your heart starts racing, and as quickly as possible, your mind tries to distract yourself, throws it to the back of your head, and you go on with your day, and your entire life is random sabotages of your mind, throwing those memories, getting you triggered, getting you frustrated, and going back and forth to the back to the front, to the back to the front, to the back to the front, because we never choose because it's simple, but not easy. We never choose to fully experience what we're looking to move through, to clear out, to get past. Instead, we think talking about it. We think, I'm not going to bash other forms. They all have their value and they all have their methodology. But if you don't fully experience the emotion that you don't want to have, that's inside of you, obviously, because you get triggered multiple times a day about it. Maybe it's thinking about your bank balance. Maybe it's thinking about outstanding student loans. Maybe it's thinking about the tension with your spouse. Maybe it's thinking about the tension with your children. Maybe it's thinking about the condition health-wise that you're dealing with or the weight that you know is 15 or 45 pounds over what it should be and what you want it to be. How many times a day does that come into your mind and the only thing you know to do is you don't even do it consciously. Your mind just, let's focus on something else. Or you could get into more self-sabotage where you know you drink something that makes you think, not think about it. You eat something. Um, it could be movies. It could be bad habits that, again, get you away from dealing with what you need to deal with. Remember, what we resist persists. And if you don't deal with the emotions that you don't want to have, you stay stuck in self-sabotage. And I know you may be thinking, wait, Josh, what does this have to do with the amount of new patients I get each month? Because if you don't believe you deserve getting 25 new patients, if that's your number, and it's okay if it's 45, it's okay if it's seven, there's no judgment on that. If you don't believe you deserve getting the number of new patients that you think you need to make the money you want or make the impact in your city or community that you want, I guarantee there's an emotion behind that that you're not good enough that you're not doing it right, that you're not worth it, that you don't deserve having success and happiness and life and practice just working out. And that happens somewhere from a parent, from a bully, from a friend, from a family member, from a teacher, from a preacher, that got instilled in you somewhere. And then it just started to compound and grow. And because you didn't know how to clear it out, you actually sought experiences, you created experiences in your life that reinforced it. And you're still doing it every day. Every month, your stats are the same. It's reinforcing it. It's justifying. You're right. You don't deserve it. You're right. You're not good enough. Stats or relationships. Every time you say this, he freaks out. She gets upset. Children doesn't listen. Child doesn't come home you know, before curfew. It's constantly reinforcing. So again, there's the awareness of where it's happening. What's the emotion? And now I'm showing you what you need to do about it that no one else teaches and that on your own, your mind is never going to do because your mind wants to keep you as safe as possible in the short term. But what keeps you safe in the short term 
which again is let's have a drink, let's go to a movie, or your mind just thinks of something else, what keeps you safe in the short term sabotages you in the long term. And that's what I want to shift and change for the rest of your life so you have the life you do deserve and that you're passionate about and it inspires you. So clearing is literally taking five minutes, seven minutes, maybe 10 minutes, sitting down, eyes closed, no distraction. And this is going to sound too simple, but it's actually pretty difficult. And actually going in and experiencing the emotion you have spent your life trying to avoid. So if there's a person, if there's a number on the bank account, that freaks you out and bothers you, if it's the bills you owe, what is the emotion that comes up in your stomach or your chest of fear, anger, stress? When you visualize the image, the video, the audio of whatever it is that causes that in your body, and you actually sit with it and experience it for five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 minutes, that's actually how you're going to work through it. Now, is it fun or easy? No, it's really uncomfortable, but it works. Just like doing push-ups or moving your body works to build muscle, burn calories, increase your cardiovascular. It's not easy. It's not comfortable to go running, but it works. Same thing with emotions. It can't, it's not just all positive affirmations, and we're going to get to that in a second. Visualizations, affirmations, fist pumping at motivational seminars, reading the, the latest you know, Deepak Chopra book that just makes you feel all giddy on the inside. You've done that. Where's it gotten you besides feeling good in the moment? So if you don't address what freaks you out, what brings you to anger, the stress, the fear, it's always going to keep hitting you and you're going to keep recreating experiences that justify why you have it. It doesn't just sit there. It owns you. But on a daily basis, when you do the deserving process and you start with clearing and you spend five, eight, 10 minutes, you will notice that by the end of the five or eight minutes, you can hold that person's face in your mind. You can hear what your mom said to you at seven years old that made you feel unlovable or not attractive or fat or you can picture the money, the, the amount in your bank account on your computer screen that causes you freaked out anxiety and it'll be lessened maybe by 10%, maybe by 20% in the beginning. And then by day three, it'll be lessened by 40%. By day six, it'll be lessened by 30%. Now, when you start and you go to it, it may still be just as strong, but by the end of the clearing session or workout, it'll be lessened. And each session, as long as you can picture the same image as you began with and it's lessened, you've done your workout. And what's going to start happening is when you start the clearing, it's not going to be as strong. And when you finish, it's going to be even less than the day before. And through time, you're going to change. You're going to start feeling better. You're not going to be as triggered throughout the day. So you're not going to be bombarded with those stressful thoughts. People are going to see you differently, but more importantly, you're going to start having new ideas, new actions to take, new confidence, new certainty, a newfound belief that you can go forward without this constantly happening to you. It's not going to start it's not going to continue running your life, your attitude, your optimism or pessimism for the future. So this is the first part, dealing with the negative emotions. And again, this is 100% applicable to the amount of new patients you attract in every month. If, you, if the 12 new patients you attract in every month were only three of them accept a high fee procedure and only two of them, or, or you know, if you're only getting a one third conversion rate for high fee procedures and only a 60% because they're testing you out, they're interviewing you and along with three other colleagues in your town, if that turns your stomach, that's what I'm talking about. That's where clearings need to apply to in the realm of new patient attraction. And what you'll see is when you clear this out, you could put the same amount of money, time, and effort towards your marketing, and it's going to change. Your new patients will start finding you and seeking you out 
I guarantee it. But this is the first step. So the next step, because after you clear, you're gonna have a blank slate that you couldn't have had otherwise. You just dealt with all that negativity, that stress and that toxic emotion, you let it go, and you have this opening right now in your psyche because you just put the work in, your mind's not gonna be bombarding you right now with the stress, you just did it. Then you have the ability to actually create something new. So this is where visualization takes place, but not visualization on its own. That's why I call it emotionalization. There has to be the physical, visceral, internal emotion of what you want combined with the picture. So if it's the new patients and it's the increased bank account, it's got to be the picture of how many new patients are on your books for the week, for the month. It's got to be the visualization of the bank account. When you're having 25 new patients come into you rather than 12, what does your bank account look like at the end of the month and at the end of the year? And what does that feel like? Is there a sense of pride and accomplishment? Is there a sense of gratitude? Like finally, it's working out as it should. Is there a sense of, and an emotion and a feeling of, I've got this. What is that for you? Joy, gratitude, inspiration. It's got to be combined because visualization on its own is empty. Looking at your vision board, reciting affirmations without gratitude in advance, without moving yourself internally, isn't doesn't turn, doesn't move the needle. It's not going to flip the switch. So another great example, Dr. Steve in Vermont, uh, 30 plus years in practice and a self-proclaimed self-growth junkie. So literally admitted he spent well over $200,000 um, throughout his career on personal growth and development and coaching, which actually isn't that much when you talk about a 30 year career. But he was a very successful and uh, you know, multi, multi, multi million dollar net worth, and at the point where just looking to pass on the practice uh, to his ch children, but one child. We worked together. He came to a seminar. He mentioned that after, sorry, I'm just trying to recollect because there's so many different stories. The bottom line is someone, he's already successful. All, all right, so he wakes up at 4 30 every morning reads his affirmations, reads his life uh, goals, uh, a meditator, he visualizes, it's all part of his routine. You know, this is someone he does the work and he walks it and successful, but again, staying at the same level over the past years. And because of that, feeling burnt out. When you're putting in all that energy and all that effort, but you're staying at the same level, even if the, the return is good, it feels draining when you're not seeing increase. So after he recognized this and started incorporating the full deserving process, clearing into emotionalization. So he was already doing visualization, but he wasn't doing an emotionalization. And of course he wasn't doing clearings before that. He started seeing $25,000 income differences per month. So not revenue, not he spent another $20,000 in marketing and made $25,000 more. And then you cut out the fat and taxes and it turns into like, okay, he made 600 bucks more that month. I'm talking about $25,000 income difference when he started incorporating the deserving process into all of his other self-growth work he does. And, you know, showing up to practice at 7.30 AM to accommodate uh, the early, early risers. So what happens? when you actually start to do, do the, doing the deserving process, well, first of all, immediately you start feeling better during the day because you'll start getting less of the bombarding, self-sabotaging thoughts and emotions. And you know what those are for you. I'm human, I have them. They're drastically reduced since using this and everywhere I'm going towards has drastically sped up since doing this. You know what they are for you. And you have them in income, you have them in family, you have them in health, you have them in peace of mind. That's the immediate change. The next is you could be doing the same exact workouts, practice, you know, whatever it is, uh, eating, but your results are gonna start changing just because internally. That might mean literally you digest the food differently. That might mean 
your hormones are coursing through your body differently while you sleep. That might mean people are more attracted to you and start referring because they see you in a different light. You're going to stand differently. You're going to talk differently. All these things that you have no control over, but subconsciously when you shift, everything just like a layer of an onion starts shifting. That's what's going to happen for you. And synchronicity is then begin. That's where I'm talking about people just start coming out of the woodwork. People start landing on your website. People start calling. Your staff starts being able to handle those phone calls a lot better. You are a different person. Your conversions increase. Everything starts shifting. And then when you actually experience that, you go to your next area of life. And you apply, if you started with new patient number, then you go to health, relationship, family, peace of mind, whatever you want. And there's no end point. You're, you know, you're a human being. So am I. You're living, stuff goes out of whack. That's just how it is. Whatever you're not focusing on goes out of whack. So instead of thinking, hoping, time, uh, you know, the next book you get is what's going to change everything in life, you start doing the work and everything starts shifting. Because Here's, and that's exactly why I incorporated that into all of my coaching programs now. Because before I was giving the patient procedure conversion strategies. But if you didn't have the deserving belief, self sabotage. Now you, you have the deserving belief, as long as you do the work, you'll start seeing a shift just because, just like what I said. But you have the deserving belief, and then you pair that with the best strategies whether that's you know, a new workout routine or eating, whether that's how to speak to your wife, whether that's taking responsibility for your health and your finances, whether that's practice-oriented, how to connect with patients without feeling like a salesperson, without your staff feeling like they're stalking patients who came in for a consult and haven't signed up or scheduled an appointment for the procedure, without, feeling pre without applying pressure or aggressiveness or fear tactics to patients. Because I hear that all the time from staff and doctors who are inquiring about what I teach is, hey, I learned from these people. You know, we saw increase, but I also felt like a salesperson. And I guarantee you did not get into practice to feel like a salesperson. You are the arguably highest regarded physician in the world. You should be the most respected, most trusted, most sought after, most invested in. There is no reason you need to apply anything that makes you feel salesy, aggressive, stalker-ish. I can't believe that word when I heard it. It was literally just last week uh, from staff on what they were told to do in hounding patients to get back in and to refer. So the bottom line is you apply a deserving belief with the strategies and you will see shifts that you never knew possible in 2019 in any areas of life that you apply to, or apply it to. So when I started this, I really, really hope you took notes there. I'm going to do a quick, quick summary. Clear, step one, clearing. Five to eight minutes, eyes closed, no distractions. Get that cell phone away from you or turn it on airplane mode. Because if Facebook and Instagram and texts are buzzing, you're not doing it experience the emotion you don't want to experience. Every five seconds, your mind is going to drift out of a self-protection mechanism. Come back, keep coming back, keep coming back. Hear what you heard, see what you see, see the movie of what you don't what want to experience and what you're most fearful and stressed of until five, eight minutes go by and you notice it's lessened. Shift in to emotionalization. What's the vision of what you want. What do you want the bank account looking like? What do you want the new patient flow looking like? What do you want uh, the lifestyle to look like with the doubled income? And what does that feel like? Is there gratitude? Is there inspiration? Is there excitement? Is there joy? Can you have both? It's not easy, but when you do the clearing first, it gets your emotional core engaged. You'll be able to generate the positive emotion after those two steps, and then do the emotionalization for a good 10 minutes. So the goal is that you're devoting 20 minutes every single day. And I don't care if you have five kids and three jobs and whatever, you can do it because there's someone else with your exact same circumstances 
who devotes 20 minutes a day. And the best thing is first thing in the morning because then it doesn't get pushed back. And if you can't do it, then you have a fixed time during lunch or during your evening that doesn't get distracted because you go out to dinner this night or you had too many drinks that night, that you do it every day. Because if you don't do it every day, it's no different than saying you're going to be faithful, but cheating once a month. No different than saying you're going to be sober, but drinking once a week. It doesn't work. Now, you combine that with what I shared last year with Advice Media's webinar, which was the five consult conversation that need to be had between the doctor and the primary care coordinator or patient care coordinator or lead staff who handles the phone calls because you're not on that new patient phone call. The first person the patients interact with in your office because it shouldn't be you. And I don't mean front desk. I mean the actual first sit down conversation. When you combine the expert procedure conversion difference and you have both of those, your entire practice and life will change. So Double new patient conversions. What's that going to mean for paying off student loans, mortgage, or second home? Because who you are, again, you're on this presentation, you're on this webinar. You are, I, I already know, and you're connected with Advice Media, you're looking to be your best. You're looking to have your best practice. You're investing in yourself right now by taking an hour out of your lunch or staff meetings or patient care or Instagram to be here. That says something about you. I already know who you are and what you're up to. That's why I'm giving you my full energy. And the service you deliver is priceless. Why? Because you change people's lives forever. You change their perception of themselves. You change other people's perception of them. You change, you can literally have an impact on flipping people's switch from undeserving to deserving just with your service. And you deserve to be invested in tremendously. So what I went over in that webinar were pieces of the five most important processes. And this is exactly what I teach in aesthetic practice strategies. The new patient call in, because I guarantee everyone on this webinar, there is improvement that could be made. The care coordinator initial consult when they come in, the doctor consult, then the exam, of course, your recommendations, and then finally the care coordinator fees and scheduling. What separates your new patient call in experience from other doctor's offices? I shared on that at least three things you could do differently. Now I'm telling you this not to say, oh, um, like Josh, that was a year ago, I wasn't on it. You can still get it. So I believe in Advice Media's webinar past history, you could find it as well as I put that plus more strategies at aestheticpracticestrategies.com and I'll put the URL at the bottom. There is a masterclass where I actually walk you through these strategies that you can immediately put inside your practice. So no, uh, fluff, no, just inspiration, just like I showed you the exact way to do the deserving process. And if you do it, you're going to see a shift. I tell you the exact lines to say on the phone with the new patient in a consult, with the new patient in a recommendations conversation, with the patient who has hesitations or objections. I tell you exactly what to say to eliminate indecision or hearing. I need to think about it. Your initial connection, you can't make up for a first impression. And too many doctors make the mistake of because of your accolades, because of your knowledge, because of your significance, you, you know, you are usually the most significant person in any room you walk in or the most professional. But when you walk in with that new patient, guess what? If they don't feel like they're the most important person in the room, you're just another consult for them. And they will absolutely be keeping their second and third consults that they've already booked before coming to see you and choosing one of them. But if you do what I share with you and you make them the most important in the room, person in the room, they're going to schedule for the procedure being done and they're going to cancel those other consults. They're not even going to give that doctor a chance because they don't care. Not only do they want the procedure done with you, they want their friends to know about you. So do you truly know what's important to your patient? It's not the new nose, tummy, butt, hair, it's the difference it's making in their life. Now, you may know that intrinsically, but are you actually finding that out with a specific set of questions and giving that back to the patient multiple times so they realize they're not paying you for your time, they're not paying you for a procedure, they're not paying you for um, a new nose or a new tummy, they're paying you 
to change their life. And there isn't any procedure I know of that's more expensive than the difference it's going to make in their life. And when you plant that seed very obviously and overtly without ever being a salesman, but being the most gracious, amazing doctor they've ever met, you will have people pull out their credit card so much easier with your staff than if they think they're just paying for a new nose, because then guess what? They're going to go shop around and see who has the best rates because they know you have got the skill. That's not what they're buying. Are you displaying unneediness? If you're calling people 18 times after uh, their consult, who needs who? People chase what they can't have. Are you displaying unneediness professionally? Guarantee if you really think about it, there's certain aspects of your new patient process where the patient feels this practice needs me and my investment more than I need the procedure done from them. Are you making, are you making sure that at every step of the process, your new patient prospects realize there is something really special, unique, distinct, and different about you and your practice and what you do that the other ones in your town and city don't do? because that's what people want and that's what people want to talk about and refer. People don't refer based on their results, based on you asking them to refer or any type of referral incentives, at least not number one. They refer because they want to get the credit for their referral for someone else having a really amazing experience. Just like you refer to a movie or a restaurant or something really unique, you want the credit for giving someone that same experience. And lastly, this is what, again, what's, what's in the masterclass at aestheticpracticestrategies.com. Are you painting an inspiring picture of their future? So I'll revisit it because this because it's so important. Your new patients are paying you for their future life. And I guarantee 2,000, 5,000, 15,000, 25,000, whatever the procedure costs is far less then the difference it's going to make in their life, waking up every morning, looking in the mirror, going out in public, getting dressed, how they feel, they are paying and investing in for how they're going to feel for the next five years, 20 years, or the rest of their life. And there isn't, again, any procedure that's more expensive or more valuable than, or cost-wise than the value of waking up feeling great about themselves. But they don't know that unless you paint that picture, unless you insert that into the conversation and the experience. That is what I teach you to do so people don't price shop you. They don't think, wait, I'm only going to be with you for three hours. Why does it cost $7,500? All of those questions and concerns go out the window. They don't even think about them, let alone ask them, because it's not even part of the dynamic and the relationship. They just want the end result and the difference it's going to make in their life and to trust that you're going to deliver that. And I'll show you how to do that entirely with your new patients. And lastly, I the second to last slide, because I know it's at the hour in your recommendations conversation as the doctor, your patients will start selling you on why she deserves for you to take her case rather than you sell her on why she needs to do it and why you're the best. And they're going to agree to everything necessary in order to get the best results. Everything they should be doing at home, pre and post-op, that's going to get them the best results, get the best post-op pictures, and get more people talking about how different they look. Not just showing up to your practice, spending some money in a couple hours, and getting the work done. They're going to do it all. And they're going to sell you to accept their case. And that is what is exciting. And that, along with the deserving belief, is what's going to absolutely change your practice your life, your lifestyle, and anyone who's connected to you and impacted by you. Because this is what I want you to pass on to your children, to your spouse, not just the deserving belief, but the results that you get when you dramatically increase your new patients and your income. How can you benefit the people that are most important in your life, whether that's your aging parents, your growing children, or the spouse who de de deserves your best? So that was a quick five minute breeze through of what I spent an hour on with Advice Media last November. And you can get the masterclass with extras added into it at aestheticpracticestrategies.com. That's available 
And you could attend that for the practice specific strategies that you add to the deserving process and you will be an unstoppable force. And it is exactly 3 p.m. on my dime, on my, on my uh, clock, Chad, the, I have finished what I'm saying. I don't know if you have to cut me off right now. <laughs> no, perfect. If there's any like- Josh, thank you. Yeah, you know, it's, it's so great. You know, you and I had this conversation and that's what really got me thinking is I've been to a lot of these, these various courses. I think a lot of our, our participants have as well. And, and what is it that holds us back? You know, it's not a desire. It's not a, um, a, a determination or a drive. That limiting belief that we have where we self-sabotage is, is so important. But I think you brought up something that, I think that was critical is, is, are we really willing to be vulnerable? Are we willing to go through the pain of that clearing process that doesn't feel very good, right? Especially in the moment. Um, but it's amazing um, how how much emotion can be generated if we'll take the time to do what, what you've explained and, and to, to be quiet and let it go. I think all of us have experienced that, that time when we were upset with someone, right? And, and we're ready to, we've had that conversation in our head with them um, and we know exactly what we're going to say and we know what they're going to say back to us. And it, it's very real. And, and you can actually feel your, your heart rate going up and, and your blood is boiling. And at times you actually talk to them and it's, it's nothing like you practiced. Um, but you, you had it out there, but those emotions can be generated in such a real way. And when we can, can do that and then get rid of those, those limiting beliefs that are self-sabotaging, we can get to where we need. And I'm not the expert on this. I've just, through my own experience and our conversation, I, I just, I sense this and, it, and it's in various aspects of our life. So thank you so much. Yeah, um, I, um, I, just to throw this in, I do a mini process before any conversation I'm going into that I have hesitancy about, I have some anxiety or fear, like, oh, I know, you know, this isn't going to be an easy conversation. I do it before, always makes a difference. And I love how you said the vulnerability, because you're absolutely right. None of us, most of us never really tap into it. And it's an incredible access to, for things to shift in life. But most people think of vulnerability as with another person, like, okay, I'm going to come clean. I'm going to apologize. I'm going to share my real feelings. And that, mm -hmm. takes, that takes a lot of um, stepping over the edge. The vulnerability in the deserving process is by yourself, in a room by yourself. You don't have to interact yeah. with anyone. It's, it, it makes it so much easier to start. You just got to start. I, I love it. Um, Dr. Wagner, thank you so much for taking time to be here with us today. Uh, just a couple of, of quick notes. Um, this session has been recorded. I know some came in late, so in case you're, you're like, oh, I missed part of this, I would have loved to hear, have heard that, it's recorded. And it will be posted on our, um, our YouTube channels, <coughs> excuse me, as well as our website tomorrow. And then the, the strategy from last year is also, uh, you can be found on our website under our archived webinars and on our YouTube channel as well. And so I invite you to, to pay attention to that and go, go watch that. Um, and then uh, one more thing is we've had snow flying here in Park City and we're going to have more of it. We're anticipating over another foot plus of, of snow over the next few days. We have our Visit Me Ski for free program. So if any of you are planning on coming out to, to the beautiful Park City area um, for the holidays um, or any of your, your spring breaks or, um, or, or other breaks in the, in the springtime, let us know. When you come out here, um, we, you know, pay a visit to us and I will take you skiing for free. I, I've enjoyed doing that. I've done that now for the past three years and it's something we, we love. We love to show off our, our town and have you meet our, our office staff. So it doesn't matter whether you're a client or not. Um, let me know and, and uh, we'll take care of that for you. So uh, we wish you all the best, um, everyone, um, as applying these strategies that you've learned today. Uh, let's help you make this, uh, this next year the most successful ever, help you achieve your goals. Uh, you guys are all wonderful and we, uh, we look forward to seeing you next month. Cool. Thank you, Chad. And thank you for everyone on this. I appreciate you and I admire you. Thank you. Bye-bye.